Okay, let's solve this equation. And uh, I'm going to go through the uh, process to solve this step by step. And really, this is uh, for those of you out there who are taking some sort of algebra class. It could be pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, whatever the case might be. If you are studying equations, algebraic equations, then this uh, video is going to be helpful to you. Um, my goal here uh, was not to give you uh, an equation that was so overly difficult, but not so easy as well. It's just putting, you know, maybe add enough variety in here so it can emphasize some major points about solving uh, linear equations and algebra. All right, so we're going to get to that in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last many, many years, I've constructed several online math courses. So um, I'm going to leave a link to all those courses and my math help program in the description of this video. Also, something new that I've done is um, um, added some math notes. So if you want to pick up my math notes for pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, uh, geometry, algebra two, trig, etc., I'm going to leave. Uh, you can, should be able to find that underneath this video or in the description as well. Okay, so here we are. We're faced with uh, this particular equation. What do we do? All right, so again, this is um, a linear equation. All right, this is what we call, um, this is the technical name for it. But what is the objective? Well, the objective is to solve for x, okay? We're trying to get x is equal to some number here, some value, okay? So this is really kind of a big version of it. Let me go ahead and rewrite it. It's a little bit smaller. Negative 3, okay, times x minus 1, all right, equals 1 half x plus 6. Okay. All right, so let me ask you out there in YouTube land, what do you think is the first thing we should do? Okay, what's step number one? Well, again, in this only in this particular equation, all right, there could be step number one could be different depending on what equation you have. But the first thing we need to do in this equation is apply the distributive property, right? So we need to take care of this part here. This is our first step, okay? So anytime you see something with parentheses like, you know, like this, kind of uh, written with a number outside of parentheses where it's x plus a number or 2x or y, it doesn't make a difference. Any kind of situation like this. Now, you could have multiple uh, scenarios like this. You can have them on the right-hand side. You can have two on the right-hand side, three on the right-hand side. But one of the first things you need to be able to do when you're solving an equation is to address any situations where there is a distributive property going on. Okay, so right there. Okay, so now that you know that this is the first thing we need to do, why don't you go ahead and see if you can apply the distributive property to this problem, right? So in other words, you're going to multiply that number times that term and that term, that number there. Okay, they're going to write this result of that. Uh, you're going to take one step at a time. Okay, remember, doing this step by step. And step by step, writing each result step by step is exactly how you should do all your math problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So it's going to be negative 3 times x is going to be what? Negative 3x. Now it's negative 3 times this right here is negative 1. That oftentimes confuse, confuses students. It's not positive 1. You can think of this as a plus negative 1. But this is this right here is a negative 1. So negative 3 times negative 1 is going to be what? That's going to be positive 3. All right, so obviously, if you're a little shaky on your uh, rules for positive and negative numbers, then you need to go back and review that. But this is the first, uh, this is the result of doing the distributive property here. Okay, so that's our first thing. Now, what you want to do is to rewrite the rest of the equation. Okay, you want to be able to read this like one step at a time. And so your teacher can see what you're doing, and you can see what you're doing because if you make a mistake, you can go back and edit it. Okay. What oftentimes students do is they try to take two, three steps at once and then they confuse themselves. Do not do that. Okay. Do not rush the problem. Get in the habit of rewriting. That's why it's so important to be, you know, uh, neat, structured, clear, use pencil. You know, uh, you know, these are, these are habits that, um, the more you do them, the more you practice them, the better you're going to be and the better everything in math is going to become. All right. So now what do we do? Well, here's the thing, okay? Again, in this particular problem, 
um, we have to do a, uh, a step. But if, of course, the problem was different, we may have to take another different step. So I'm only focusing on this problem. But after we have taken care of the distributor property situation, our main objective, okay, is to get all our variable terms on the left-hand side and all of our numbers on our right-hand side. So variable terms would be like negative 3x, we got the uh, one-half x, and then our numbers are obviously 3 and 6. So you got to have to shift things around. So for example, uh, one-half x, that's got to go on this side. This 3 has got to go on this side. So it's like like football, you got people that are off sides, okay? You're like, okay, hey, three, you got to go on this side. One half X, you got to go on this side. So we need to shuffle these terms and numbers around. Um, that is what we want to do, okay? So uh, that's going to require a couple of different things. Let's start off with the um, easy stuff here. Well, not easy stuff, but we'll start with the number, okay? Maybe that's a little bit easier to understand. So I need to take this three and get rid of it on this side because remember, this is where my variable, uh, I only want variables on this side, and I only want numbers on this side of the equation. So let's get rid of this three over here. So it's easy, right? I'm gonna be like, hey, I wanna get rid of you, so I'm gonna subtract you right there, right? So a positive three and minus a three is going to be zero, but whatever I do, and this is the main like principle of solving equations in algebra, whatever I do to one, hand, one side of the equation, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So if I'm subtracting three on this left-hand side, I also got to subtract three on the right-hand side. You got to be fair. You got to do the same thing. Then you want to draw a nice little line like so, okay? All right, now what you're going to be doing is conceptually, you're going to be kind of adding down like this, all right? So negative 3x plus nothing is just negative 3x. A positive 3 plus a negative 3 is 0. That goes away, all right? You're like, yay, well, now we have no numbers on the left-hand side. That's what we wanted. 1 half x plus nothing is just going to be 1 half x. Now, our negative 3 didn't go, you know, we, we made it go away over here, but all we did was just basically shuffle it over and move it over to the right-hand side of the equation. That's where we wanted it. So 6 plus negative 3 is going to be a positive 3 right here. Okay, let me write that a little better. All right, so that is what we, um, the first um, uh, thing, first step in terms of addressing the numbers. Okay, now we gotta do the same thing, uh, but we gotta now address the variable stuff. We gotta take care of this uh, one half x. So let's go ahead and write this a little bit better. Negative three x is equal to one half x plus three. Now, one thing to note, this equation and compared to our original equation okay all these equations are equivalent this is equal to this and uh basically they're algebraically the same equation it's just simpler versions of them until we get the until we get to the ultimate simplest version which is going to be x equals to some number that's our solution okay so let's um let's go ahead and continue to move forward so now at this point Hopefully you could be like, okay, uh, we got to make sure that we have only variables here and only numbers here. So I'm seeing, okay, I got all my numbers on the right hand side, so that's that's taken care of. But I got to address this uh, one half x. I got to get it over to the left hand side. So we're going to use the same idea as before. We're going to subtract one half x from both sides now of the equation. Okay, this is a positive one half x. So if I subtract a one half x from both sides, I get rid of the one half x on the right hand side and I put it on the left hand side. All right, so negative three x plus a negative one half x gives me what? Negative three and one half x's and that's gonna be equal to, remember you're adding down, this goes away, three plus nothing is just going to be uh, positive three. All right, so we're almost there, okay? so. Can you solve this basic equation? Can you solve this basic equation? All right, so let's first of all deal with this mixed number, three and one half. Uh, uh, how do we uh, express this? This is a mixed number fraction. Let's write this as an improper fraction. So we're gonna go two times three is six, plus one is seven over two, right? So two times three is six, plus one is seven over two. So the equivalent problem here, the equivalent fraction is gonna be negative, 7 halves x is equal to 3, okay? 
So when you're dealing with fractions, mixed fractions in algebra, turn them into improper fractions. So we're just going to rewrite this like this. Now, how do I solve for x? Well, we have a negative 7 half x. So the way to deal with this is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of this. We're going to flip this guy upside down. All right. So when we flip it upside down, we get 2 over 7. And we're going to multiply it by a negative because we want a positive x. Okay. So I multiply negative, to, uh, negative 7 halves by negative um, 2 sevenths. Okay. I'm going to get a positive 1x or a just x. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. This is my solution. But again, remember the rule in algebra. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I got to do the exact same thing to the other side. So I got to multiply the right hand side by this negative two sevenths. Okay. So my solution. Again, when I multiply these two numbers together, I'm just going to get a 1x or x. That's what I want. But now i got to figure out what 3 or 3 over 1 times negative 2 sevenths is going to be. And, of course, we can just do this real quick. 3 times 2 is 6 or negative 6 here. And then 1 times 7 is 7. So that is our solution. x is equal to negative 6 sevenths. And there you go. Okay, so that is the solution to this equation, step by step. We had some fractions in there. We had some positive negative numbers, some distributor properties. I mean, this was a lot of fun, right? Don't you think so? I mean, like, hey, listen, uh, I know a lot of, I know math gets uh, a bad rap from a lot of you out there, but you got to think of this as fun. Think of it as uh, a puzzle you'll do on your cell phone, like, Tetris or anything else or whatever, you know, they, and I think the thing is this math, it's not going to be fun or you're not going to enjoy it or you're not going to like even like doing it if you're frustrated with it and, you, and you're just keep getting the wrong answers. But once you know how to do a problem and you're like, okay, I can do this. Now you just work it step by step by step. Okay. And follow, you know, hopefully your teacher is showing you step by step by step. Good math teachers will obviously show you, break it down like that. Uh, but, you know, of course, if you need more help in solving equations, you do. Let me leave you with a couple of things here. One, I have um, a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. Hopefully you'll, you'll uh, consider subscribing and liking this video. But um, I got a ton of stuff on my uh, YouTube channel to help you out. Um, again, if you really, really need full instruction on this, you want to check out my math help program. Um, and then also I have my notes. You can uh, check out my notes. You can see some examples. Uh, this is kind of more broken down in a detailed way. Good reference for you there as well. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.